Hi and welcome to the Conan Fitness Platinum webinars for this month and this time we're looking at nutrition for performance. Now previously we've looked at in some of our principles of nutrition um, we've looked at some of the components of, of calories in when we talk calories in things like our, our macronutrients, our carbs, proteins, fats and even alcohol. <clears throat> we've looked at some of the caloric needs even uh, an, an equation just to give us a rough idea about the amount of calories that we should be taking in daily depending on our lifestyle and our size, sex, activity levels, all those sorts of factors. And we've even looked at basic ratios for general diet planning. Um, we say basic or general planning just because it is quite general and it can vary a lot depending on what someone wants but from a general level most people either want some sort of weight maintenance or, or even some sort of weight loss uh, for most people. Today we're going to be looking at the most significant variable uh, in nutrition and nutrition planning um, from our aim on the very other end of the spectrum being performance. So, And, and that most significant variable is actually carbohydrates, which you'll, you'll see. But the reason we're looking at performance is to take the, <clears throat> the variation between someone who's after weight loss, so they're looking for some sort of caloric deficit because they want to lose weight, um, versus someone who's highly active, someone after performance, your typical athlete, your typical um, very active performance oriented person who has much higher caloric needs and most of those extra calories in these cases will come from carbohydrates and that's what, what we're going to look at today. So um, if you remember in previous uh, sessions that we've had, we looked at this basic calculation that we've got here, which is how to calculate our basal metabolic rate. There's, a, there's an equation there for men and one for women. And we even looked at this, which is once we've got our basal metabolic rate dependent on our sex and our size, um, we can use this activity factor. So someone who's quite sedentary, um, they take that basal metabolic rate and they multiply it by uh, the factor that's uh, it says here 1.2 for someone who's sedentary, right up to someone who's extra active um, or extremely active, up to 1.9. So basically almost twice as much as what their basal metabolic needs are to account for the, the added um, calories needed to support their activity or their activity levels. Well, what we're going to do today is um, look at the difference in two different people uh, or two examples. Um, the first is... Uh, take for example person A. Person A is an 80 kilogram man, 180 centimeters, who's lightly active and wants fat loss. So some sort of weight loss, ideally fat. And let's compare that to the topic of today's webinar, which is um, an 80 kilogram man, same weight, 180 centimeters, same height, who's very active. So we're talking about someone who's typical athlete who wants performance and that sort of presumes weight maintenance because they're not after losing weight, um, they're not necessarily after gaining weight, they just want weight maintenance but they want the best performance for their sport or their activity. And we're going to compare them. Some of you might remember previously we spoke about the basic ratios for general diet planning. We said 50-30-20 where... 50% um, of the carbs, sorry, 50% of energy would come from carbs, 30% come from protein, 20% from fat. And there's some of the basic ratios that we kind of um, suggest just to get people started. Um, from there, you can start tweaking to, to tailor to your specific needs. But it's a, it's a good general place to start. If you look at the um, Dietitians Australia, etc., they'll probably, they're, they're fairly similar. They'll, they'll generally say slightly higher carb, probably in the 60% range as opposed to 50 and um, slightly lower protein, probably around the 20 or even or even less rather than 30. Some people say 15. Um, and uh, slightly higher for fat, 25, even 30-ish uh, percent. The reason we say we suggest the you know, slightly lower fat intake, again, keeping in mind that most people generally want some sort of uh, fat loss and slightly lower carbs um, around the 50% mark is, again, for that, that sort of... Uh, aim or the, the fat loss requirements that most people are after and slightly higher protein just because you've got to eat something. <laughs> but what we're going to look at today is that out of these two people, what we'll find is that the recommended daily intake of something like protein doesn't change that much. So the, the absolute value, if we were to take this 80 kilo male, 180 centimetres, their protein intake, it only, we usually 
alter somewhere between one and two kilo, two grams per kilo. So somewhere between 80 and 160 grams per day. And it would never really change much more than that. In our example of 30% of caloric intake, um, that's going to equate roughly to about, uh, let's have a look, let's do these equations. Person A, if we were to do that calculation we saw in the previous slide, it would come out to this figure for their basal metabolic rate, this 1858 calories, basal. Now, if we said that they were uh, lightly active, as in not sedentary but lightly active, that was multiplying by the 1.375, and it gives us this figure. As far as daily calories required to maintain weight, at their activity levels. Now, if we're to take into account that they want fat loss, and um, if you remember previously, we're looking at around about 500-ish calories deficit. We don't want to go too much more than that on a daily basis, and we've already been into why, but if we were to take that, we're looking at around about 2,000 calories as a rounded figure. Now, take uh, person B. Again, they got the same height and weight, so we're looking at the fairly similar as far as basal metabolism, but obviously they're, not only is their activity level higher, we're going to take the, um, the very active one, and that's 1.725 times basal metabolism, which gives us this figure, 3205. And because we want to maintain weight while sufficing these needs, we're going to keep it around there. Um, now, depending on depending on this person's activity level, they may need to tweak it because this is only a guide. And there, we've said 1.725. They might find that over time they're losing weight. They say, wow, we, we need to go to what the, the figure 1.9. We need to go higher than that. And this is where the tweaking comes into account. But for now, let's take these figures. And let's use the example where person A, if we're sitting on our, where is it, here. If person A is to stick to that original general guideline of 50-30-20, meaning 50% carbohydrates, 30% uh, protein, and 20% of fat, um, percent of the caloric intake. These are the figures we'd look at. Uh, roughly 1,000 calories a day would be from carbs. It's about 250 grams. If you remember, that's four, grams per, uh, four calories per gram. Our protein requirements would be about 600 calories, so about 150 grams. And fat would be around the 44 gram mark. Now, as I was saying before, protein requirements from person A to person B who has vastly higher caloric needs, the protein absolute figure, it won't change that much. If you can see in these two equations, it's the same. Now, um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it would be somewhere in that one gram to two grams per kilo mark. So the absolute value isn't the same. But if you have a look at the percentage, what we've worked out here is 18% um, coming from protein in person B. It looks like a vastly different amount, but it's actually not the absolute amount. The absolute amount isn't. You've got to keep into account that the total calorie intake is much higher, and since the absolute grams is the same, it looks much less as a percentage. So we've got to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Fat, on the other hand. It doesn't increase a huge amount, um, but it's certainly increased, and we've got to keep into account, keep in mind that if added calories are coming in, um, the percentage of fat you can keep it fairly similar. So in this case, it's exactly the same, twenty percent, but um, it can still stay around there. It can even go a little higher, twenty-five percent, because we've got the added calorie uh, requirements. So we're doing the activity, we're burning the fat. Um, this person's not necessarily after fat loss, so you can stick around the 20-25% mark, and it's and it's fine. So we've taken it in this example right up to the 70 grams mark, and that's certainly not too high at all for someone this active. Um, that's still considered low fat for an active person, um, but it's taken us up to 630 calories, and from the percentage, as we said, it's the same. So it's not protein and fat that changes in a vast degree even when we're taking into account two people of completely different aims, so someone wants weight loss versus someone who wants weight maintenance, and someone who's of low um, activity level versus someone who's extremely high activity level. So person B, where does all the added caloric needs come from? Well, it comes from carbohydrates, and that's why you can see we've gone from 250 grams to almost 500, so it's pretty much doubled. And that's taken our percentage right up to 62%. So again, it looks like a decent jump, um, and 
that that is a jump as far as percentage and absolute values. So when we're talking about um, increasing uh, caloric needs from an athlete versus a fat loss person, the vast majority of the increase in caloric requirements comes from carbohydrates. And if we were to keep putting the calories up, like we said, per, if we were to measure it, and person B says over a series of weeks, says, look, I'm actually losing weight over time, and my performance isn't improving that much, then what we would look at doing is saying, well, maybe their energy needs isn't high enough. Maybe over time, their glycogen storage, you know, their, their energy storage in their muscles is actually slowly depleting. So they're not maintaining it. And if anything, they want to replete, you know, every time they train to get maximum performance. We'll say, all right, we need even more energy requirements. What would we change? Well, pretty much we wouldn't change protein. It'd stay the same or maybe even a little less because certainly don't need any more. That, that's near the, that's near the top end of the one to two grams per kilos. Um, fat, well, wouldn't need to increase it much more. It's the carbohydrates that we would need to increase. So when it comes to performance, uh, we need more calories. Those calories come primarily from carbohydrates. Um, and keeping in mind, one of the other than just energy needs, one of the main reasons is so that we replenish that muscle glycogen. That's the uh, the stored carbohydrates in the muscle because that's the energy we have when we need to train for so, for someone who's highly active. They're doing sport. They're doing activity. They need that muscle glycogen. So to wrap up, our suggestion is start with the 50, 30, 20, just as a general uh, daily kind of general rule. And that's more so for someone who's, you know, wants maintenance or some sort of low calorie starting point if someone wants uh, weight loss or, or maintenance. But if you're going to go for performance, then we start increasing carbs. We increase the carbs for performance as if that's our number one goal. You can have more fat as the the, the 20 to 25 percentage. Um, while that percentage figure doesn't change that much, it can come up a little because you're not as um, you know you don't have to be as strict on fat because of the added um, activity. But that 20 to 25 percent figure is referring to more calories. So 20 to 25 percent of more calories means more absolute grams of fat that you can allow in your diet. And then, as we said about protein, well, that stays pretty similar. As far as an absolute value goes, you'll see the percentage go down, but that's just because our calories have gone up, so the percentage has gone down. The absolute value is still pretty similar. Um, it can come down a little bit uh, without too much of a drama. So if your goal is performance, that's the way to go. If the goal is fat loss, we've, we're going to go into more detail on that in successive uh, set, uh, webinars. And if your goal is performance and fat loss, <laughs> so we're looking at as much performance as we can get whilst getting as much fat loss as we can get. And there is a little bit of a trade-off there. If you wanted 100% you know, optimizing fat loss, you um, generally performance wouldn't be optimized and vice versa. But if you want a bit of both, again, stay tuned for later webinars because we'll go into that and we'll go into how the cycling the cycling of these nutrients is the best way to achieve that. And until then, train hard, play smart, and bring out the warrior within. Thanks.